Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's clip is an overview of the brand new audio adapter for the DJI Osmo Pocket. This is the one accessory that everybody's been waiting for because it allows you to very easily add an external microphone to your Osmo Pocket to improve the audio. Now, even though the internal microphones on the Osmo Pocket do an amazing job of picking up normal audio and even knocking down wind noise when you're outside, having the ability to add a lapel mic or a shotgun mic to the product just opens up a lot more possibilities and makes your audio even more professional. Now, as part of this clip, I'd like to start off with an unboxing of the product. Actually, it'll be an unbagging of the product because it comes in a bag. But then I'll talk a little bit about microphone standards because you're going to want to add a microphone to it. And if the terms TS, TRS, and TRRS aren't familiar to you, you're going to want to pay attention to that section because I'll explain those standards. I'll also come back and do some comparisons. I've got an inexpensive lapel mic and two road mics that I use when I'm out on a run and gun setup to give you a comparison between what the internal mic sounds like and what the external mic sound like, just in case you're in the market for a microphone. Then finally, I'll come back with some conclusions. But let's get started with the unboxing. So it comes in a hang bag like this, and when you tear it open, what's cool is it's got a Ziploc on it, so you can hang on to it if you want to store it away. It is tiny, and I'll talk about that in a second. But you get a manual, which looks like Looks like an encyclopedia. There's just a ton of pages in here, and you'll realize pretty quickly that's because it's printed in a bunch of different languages. The only pages, if you're from the U.S., that you're going to care about are the first two pages, and really there's one thing in there that talks about this in particular. So all they really want to warn you about is that when you use this product, you have to use a TRS mic, and I'll explain what that is in a second. But the product itself is incredibly small and streamlined. It's a lot smaller than a lot of other external audio adapters. If you guys have used the Hero products and you've used their external audio adapter, the thing is massive. I'll show you that in the conclusion portion, but it's really, really tiny. And I always like to give you sort of a feel for how small it is. And I was thinking a lot about it. And for me, it's a tiny product. But if you were, say, a gummy bear, <laughs> you would be terrorized by this thing. It would be gigantic. So when you're comparing it to a gummy bear, it's big. But for somebody like it's not that big, but I was wondering if I could get two gummy bears to stand on each other's shoulders, maybe it'd be about the size of two gummy bears. So if you need a reference point, the international standard I would use would be about two gummy bears standing on each other's shoulders. Besides that, it's just beautifully crafted. It's made out of sort of a rubberized material, makes it really easy to plug into the bottom of this. And it couldn't be simpler. There's two connections. There's a USB-C on this end and a three and a half millimeter jack on this end for the microphone. So this end gets plugged into the Osmo, this end plug in the microphone and you're off and running. Now between these two connections, a lot of magic happens. <laughs> There's a lot of conversion going on for the audio and amplitude levels and all the rest of that stuff because there is no adjustments on the Osmo that I know of where I can adjust the audio level. So when you plug this thing in, the Osmo has got to look at whatever microphone you've plugged in, listen to the audio a little bit, and then make some internal adjustments through the software to give you an adequate level of audio in there. So that's going to be kind of cool. And you'll actually see that when I do the testing. When I first plug it in, it takes a second or two for it to adjust to the microphone I've got plugged in, then the audio gets much better. Now, normally you wouldn't plug it in live. You would have it plugged in, turn it on, and then the audio would be ready to go when you brought it up. But in this case, I'm testing it without the mic plugged in, then I'm going to plug a mic in, so it does take a second for it to settle. And that's pretty much it for the unboxing. Again, to use it, it couldn't be simpler. On the bottom of your Osmo Pocket, you've got a nice USB-C connection. You plug this in, and again, USB-C is not polarity sensitive, so you can plug it in that way, you can plug it in that way, completely up to you. I plug it in this way, where the DJI logo is out front, because there's a bit of a bump where the electronics exist here in the back. You can see that bump on the bottom, and I, I kind of keep that back because it protects it. If you flip it around, now you've got that bulge out the front. It's just another thing to get snagged on if you're moving around with the Osmo Pocket. So I put the bulge to the back, and then you've got the 35 millimeter on the bottom, and it's really straightforward. Now I've tested this again with a lavalier mic and two different road mics. I've also tested it with a wireless setup and it works just great. As long as you're providing standard audio through a three and a half millimeter jack, you're gonna be fine. But it is critical, the type of connection you're gonna plug in there. And again, the only one it supports is a TRS. And I'll explain again what that is in a minute, but that's pretty much it for the unboxing and basic explanation. It's one of those drop dead simple accessories, which I love where it just works. You just plug it in, it does what it says it's gonna do, and you're off and running. There's not a lot of training or configuration settings you've got to deal with. Just plug it in and start Start recording audio. So stay tuned and I'll explain the audio standards next, then we'll go into some testing and I'll come back with some conclusions. Now I'll cover some basic microphone terminology and explain what type of microphone you need to use with the audio adapter for your Osmo Pocket. Most consumer microphones use a standard 3.5 millimeter plug and that refers to the diameter of the plug itself. If you look closer at the metal part at the end of that cable, you'll notice there are silver portions and there are black portions. The black are insulators between the conductors, which are the silver parts. 
And the way the terminology works is the outermost part is called the tip, the innermost part is called the sleeve or the ground, and then there's rings in the middle. And depending on how many rings you have, it determines the type of cable you've got. So the simplest type of cable is a TS, where it's got a tip and it's got a sleeve. If you've got a ring in the middle, it's a tip ring sleeve. And if you've got two rings in the middle, it's a tip ring ring sleeve. Now, it may seem confusing, but in essence what that means is the TS is typically used for a mono microphone because you've got a ground and one conductor. The TRS provides for a stereo microphone where you have a ground, a left, and a right. And the TRRS provides for both a stereo microphone and typically a headphone. And that's used typically on computers. It's not used for audio equipment. Now, the audio adapter for the Osmo Pocket will only support the TRS. So it won't support the TS and it won't support the TRRS. So you have to be very careful when you're using it that you pick a TRS mic. Now, if you find that your microphone has the TRRS kind of plug on it, there are very inexpensive adapters that will convert that to a standard TRS connection. But what you want to use with your Osmo Pocket audio adapter is a microphone that has three conductors. So you should count two black bands on there and you know you're set. Now I'd like to compare the audio produced from the two internal microphones on the Osmo Pocket against three popular external microphones. Now I've got a lavalier microphone over here, it's a lapel mic. It's nothing fancy, it's a generic under $30 lapel mic, but it's very common when you're recording outdoors. I've also got a Rode microphone here. This is the Rode Video Micro. It's a very popular run and gun microphone that you'll probably use with a rig if you're carrying this around on a selfie stick. The last one is the brand new Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, which is an amplified microphone. This one has a really nice collection pattern for audio. This one has sort of a wide collection pattern, but it is a bit of a shotgun profile. This one is a very specific shotgun profile and it's amplified. So that one will look straight down the barrel and catch the audio in front of it and nothing to either side. This has a little wider a pattern. I find this one to be a little bit softer as well, which I like. So I'll plug all three of these in and I'll set this up here and actually record the video on that. I'll test the mic internally first, then I'll tell you I'm plugging in the external mic and you'll know I've switched and you can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Then we'll come back and review them once I'm done. This first test is a comparison between the lapel mic I've got clipped to my shirt and the two internal mics on the Osmo Pocket, which is what you're listening to right now. I've got the Osmo Pocket on a stand at eye level, about arm's length away, just to give you a feel for how close I am to the camera. I'm going to plug in the lapel mic. It'll take a second for the Osmo Pocket to adjust, and then we can do a comparison of the audio. All right, so let me plug in the mic. Okay, now I'm on the lapel mic, and hopefully the audio is adjusted. I tend to use this mic an awful lot when I'm outdoors because it picks up audio real well and knocks down a lot of the background noise. And I find that the audio adapter takes a second to make an adjustment when you plug in a new mic. Normally you would boot up the Osmo Pocket with the mic already connected, you wouldn't have to wait. But anyway, that's a test of what the audio sounds like. And I'll come back at the end and do some comparisons because I haven't heard it yet. This next test is a comparison between the Rode Video Micro and the internal mics on the Osmo Pocket, which again you're listening to right now. I'll plug the mic in in a second, but before I do, I have to say that the Rode Video Micro is my go-to setup for any kind of run and gun shoot I'm doing. I love using it with my Hero products, and I'm really looking forward to using it with the Osmo Pocket as well, so I hope this goes well. All right, so let me connect it up and see how it sounds. Okay, I'm plugged in. It's probably gonna take a second for it to adjust its levels. We should be set now. So the audio you're hearing now is coming through the Rode Video Micro and I'm really hoping this works out well because that mic has a really warm sound. It tends to be a little softer, and I like that a lot when I'm doing interviews or I'm out in the field recording. And the windscreen's a benefit too if it's a really windy day. So this is a comparison between the two. And uh, again, I can't tell what it sounds like until I get upstairs and do a comparison, but I'll absolutely give you some opinions at the end of this. This final comparison is between the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus and the internal mics on the Osmo Pocket, which you're hearing me through now. I use this mic an awful lot in the studio, but because it's a shotgun mic, when I use it outdoors, it tends to pick up anything in its path this direction. So I don't use it that often outdoors, but it's a very popular mic for studio recordings and interviews, and a better quality mic than the other two I tested. So it'll be interesting to see how it sounds when I connect it up to the Osmo Pocket. All right, so let's connect it up and see what we get. Okay, it's connecting up now. It might take a second for it to settle in. Again, it is a powered microphone. It's got a battery and it does amplify and give you some adjustments over the quality of the audio. But I like it a lot when I'm doing interviews because it tends to pick up all the voices directly in front of it, which is great when you're interviewing somebody. 
So hopefully it sounds great. We'll have to see. And again, I haven't heard it. So when I get upstairs and we go into post and I start doing some editing, I'll get a chance to listen to it. And I'll come back after we're done with this with some of my impressions of the three mics. Now that I've finished the three comparisons and had a chance to listen to the audio samples, I have a few observations. The first one was that the Osmo Pocket took a couple of seconds to adjust its audio gains for the different microphones that I plugged in. And I think that's just the result of it using the internal microphones and having the gain set for those. And here I come out of the dark at night, plug a microphone in and it's got to sort of reset that gain to accommodate those external microphones. Not a big deal because normally you're going to have the audio adapter plugged in, the microphones plugged in when you boot it up. So I think that process will be a lot quicker. The second observation, which might be more of a challenge, is that I don't know of any way for me to have control over the audio levels in the Osmo Pocket. That may be something they change in future versions of the firmware. It'd be great if I could bump that up or dial it back based on the mic I'm using, but for now, this guy decides what that audio level should be. And you could see there was a bit of a challenge with the lav mic where it was overmodulated, and that was because I had it too close to my chin. But overmodulation and clipping is a problem because I can't fix that in post. That's information in the audio that's not there, and I can't put it back in. But that's easy to fix because I can slide the mic down my shirt. So I'll find the perfect spot where the lav mic should sit on my shirt to not overmodulate the audio in the Osmo Pocket, and that's fixed. Um, the middle mic, the Video Micro, was my favorite of all three, and you notice the level on that was lower. The audio quality was better, it was a much richer sound, and it sounded wonderful, but I have to bump that up in post, and that's not a big deal. I can definitely crank the amplitude up in post to compensate for that. The third one, the Video Mic Pro Plus, was the best of the three, and that shouldn't have been a surprise because it's the most expensive mic, it's an amplified mic, and it's got some limiting in there to not overmodulate. It's gonna take charge of you know overmodulating, and between the two, they have a great relationship to sort of keep that audio on track. It did sound a little higher to me. It sounded like it favored the high end a little bit more, and that's perfect if you're doing interviews because you wanna catch every nuance of a word that somebody's saying. This one for me is great for general conversations, and this is still my go-to mic. I just have to make sure that I adjust it to the right spot on my shirt so I get the audio I'm looking for, but I guess in general, I was really pleased with the results of all three microphones, and each of these, to me, and again, it's my ear, sounded better than the internal mics on here, and that's what you'd expect, and I think that little uh, audio adapter is definitely worth the money to help you through that. In this last section, I'll offer some final thoughts and give you my overall impression of the new audio adapter for the DJI Osmo Pocket. Now, I've had the product for about a week, and I've tested it on a wide variety of microphones, everything from really simple lav mics all the way up through amplified shotgun mics. I actually used it the other day with a wireless mic setup, and the thing just works. It's one of those rare accessories that doesn't require any fiddling or configuration. You plug it in, you plug a mic into it, and you're off and recording audio. Now, if you own the Osmo Pocket, this is definitely one of the accessories you're going to want to add to your kit because sooner or later, you're going to want to plug an external mic in, whether you're out vlogging for the day for your YouTube channel and you need really crisp audio, or, or you're going to a birthday party for Uncle Frank and you want to make sure you hear the kids sing happy birthday, this guy's going to do it for you. Now, it's $39, which does seem expensive, but it's not really that expensive when you compare it to other products. So I mentioned the GoPro product a little bit ago. This is the audio adapter for the GoPro product. Look at the size of that thing. It's about a third the size of a Hero product, and it's gigantic. It's got a big floppy cable on the end. Like, there's nothing elegant about this. It's almost three times the price, by the way, of this DJI product. So when you consider these two, first of all, this is a third generation product. This is a first generation product. And I know I get beat up about being a fanboy for DJI, but man, that's some sweet engineering right there. And they packed all the functionality of this into something that small. Both of them have USB-C connections and three and a half millimeters on the other end. And all the magic that happens in here happens in a package that small. So when you consider that, this guy, I have to be careful here, there's a bit of a protest going on with the, with the gummy bears, but this guy is a good buy. And it's something, again, that you're going to use again and again, whether you use a lapel mic or some other type of external mic, it just does the job. So for me, it's a no-brainer. They're available now on the DJI website. We've been waiting for quite a while for these to be released. They finally released them, um, and I would recommend you add it to your kit. Now, I've got links below where you can actually find this on the DJI website. There's a ton of companies that are selling it. I'll probably put links down there for the mics as well, because a lot of people are going to ask me which mics were you using and where can I find them. So there'll be links down there for that as well. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down there. I've got a ton more content coming this week and next. A lot of Osmo stuff coming too. So if you're interested in that product, you'll definitely want to subscribe to the channel. I really have a lot of fun putting these together. And I always try to build in a little bit of extra understanding around the technology. So hopefully you guys find that stuff helpful because I love doing these clips. So I'll keep doing them as long as you guys are watching and still subscribing to the channel. So thanks a lot for all your support. And until next time, Happy flying. Mm -hmm.